thanks so much for getting VBS in a bag for grown-ups. This is the first year that we've done that, and I'm pretty excited about it. I've put together three reflections, one for each day. It's a little bit of a story from me, and then a little bit of a reflection from you at the end. Sometimes, I think it's hard to imagine that God loves us the way that the Bible says that he does. Our lives seem sometimes to tell us something completely different. It's hard to separate the consequences and actions of a world that seem pretty topsy-turvy from our belief that God loves us. Kids tell me all the time, it doesn't seem like God loves me, or I can't feel it. That last one always hits me the hardest. I can't feel it. I know that developmentally it's hard for kids to wrap their heads around what, might fe what that might feel like. They're pretty invested, especially as teenagers, that love has to be felt in a concrete, goosebumpy, holy cow, that's amazing kind of way. That's what they think romantic love is too. That's another day. For me, feeling God's love has actually been those things from time to time. Haven't we all had that experience where we stopped dead in our tracks and said, wow, that was a God moment? Or those moments that were so unexplainable that we just couldn't attribute them to anything else? I had one of those. My dad passed away several years ago. He was from a small town in Missouri. He came from a farming family with three sisters and two brothers. His youngest brother was named Don. Don, by all accounts, was the darling of the family, the mischievous one. He was handsome and brave and everyone loved him. When he was 17, he was on a pond with two of his buddies. We don't know exactly what happened, but one of the boys fell out of the boat. None of them could swim. Uncle Don dove in anyway. He got his buddy back in the boat, but he couldn't get himself back in, and he drowned. This is about all I ever knew about Uncle Don. My dad was afraid of the water, and he also made me afraid of the water. The family never talked about him at all. It was always just too painful. When my dad passed away, it was in the summer, just a few weeks before one of our summer service trips. We were headed to Springfield, Missouri, and we're going to go see the Passion Play. We arrived at the Passion Play, and my job was to get the 40 kids that were registered, situated and corralled and down in their seats, so I was pretty occupied. Tim was one of the chaperones that year. He saw a van that said Shell City, Missouri on it. That's the town that my dad was from. Out of curiosity, Tim went over and introduced himself and told them that we were related to Richard King, my dad. Tim came over to me very excitedly and told me I had to go meet these people. I was slightly irritated at the time because I had those 40 kids to get settled, and quite frankly, I wasn't really very interested. Tim kept urging me to go meet them, and so to get him off my back, I went over after everyone was settled and introduced myself. It was just a few white-haired people that looked very sweet, and I instantly felt bad for trying to avoid them. There were about a dozen of them, and they were all smiling at me, but there was this one man that I felt compelled to sit next to. I mean compelled, like I didn't have a choice. I sat next to him. He looked straight into my eyes and introduced himself, and for the life of me, I cannot remember his name, and it makes me sad every time I think about it. He said, my name is, and I'm the boy that your uncle pulled from the pond. He saved my life. He went on to tell me about his family and his life. He didn't tell me the details of that day because I assume it was just too much for him too. We hugged and we held each other for several minutes and I knew in that moment that God was holding us too. When I plan a summer trip, I book all of our excursions well in advance. This trip to the Passion Play was booked several months before my dad passed away. What are the odds of me planning that trip, my dad passing, Shell City also planning a trip on the exact same day, Tim being nosy, and let's not forget, we're all sitting in an outdoor amphitheater waiting to be told the story of Jesus. I reflect back on this day often and I'm always brought to tears, partially because I really miss my dad, partially because I'm still in awe at what conspired that day, but mostly because I felt the love of God wrapped around me like a warm, comforting blanket that whispered to me, I'm always with you. The other thing that always comes to mind is that those 40 kids also got to experience my God moment. I told them the story that night in our lodge and there wasn't a dry eye in the house. We all felt it. We all knew. I think they took it with them. As you think about your God moments, take a minute to reflect. My experience was one of those concrete, goosebumpy experiences. 
but most of our experiences are quiet and comforting and still. Take the time to reflect each night about where God was in your life that day. You might come to realize that he's there a lot. It's just that we don't take the time to notice.